Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything. I'm coming at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to make some molds using cork. What are we making molds for? Well, we're going to make some stone walls. Now, you can actually make your stone walls out of cork. Uh, cork is actually fairly durable uh, as long as you base it. If you uh, don't base it, then you can get it can break up pretty easily and you can get multiple pieces like this. Now I've got these pieces all uh, saved from previous projects to use as rubble and things like that, which I could use as actual bricks in the stone wall. But what we're going to do is we're going to make it a field stone stone wall and this is going to be in 20 five millimeter so I'm going to be you know 28 millimeters so that I can use it with bolt action uh, larger scale or maybe even uh, hail Caesar you know I'm going to make some walls that can be used in any genre so now what I do is it doesn't really matter how thick you make your walls uh, your, 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 your mold uh, because I'll show you here in just a moment now I'm going to be basing it on popsicle sticks, right? So these are six inch popsicle sticks. Uh, they're just under six inches, like maybe uh, if you count that as six, maybe it's a six and seven eighths. Okay, so so what I need to do is cut my wall into, I need to make my wall six and seven eighths, because he doesn't need to be extending past this. Okay, so I'm measuring, I mean not six, five and seven eighths. Maybe just a little bit less, a fraction of an inch. And then I just cut into it. Now I'm going to need uh, two pieces. So... We're going to extend this out to there. Okay, and that piece broke, like corkboard does. Perfect. And then I'm just going to cut a chunk off of here. It doesn't matter if it's straight or not. It totally irrelevant. This is just an easy cut. There we go. And then we can get this cork board out of the way. All right. Now, I do need to cut a couple of straight lines. Now, this one looks like it's already a straight line. So, that's fine. Then it's going to be the top part. And then I need a straight line here as well. Let's make sure that's, yep, that's good. I'm using the metal knife so that I can cut right along the, on the metal, I'm sorry, metal knife, the metal ruler so that I can cut right along the side of the, bolt, the ruler and I'm getting a perfectly straight cut. Perfect. Okay. This piece here will be needed. Okay, so I've got my perfectly straight cut there. I've got my perfectly straight cut there. So now I need to just split this into two pieces. It doesn't matter how I do it. Because this is the back side of the mold that won't ever see any of the stones. I found that using a sawing motion you know, up and down, up and down, when cutting cork is actually a better motion, uh, less chance of it breaking. There we go. Okay, so I've got my two pieces. You know, let's just clean this off. This cork dust. It's like sawdust. You get a lot of it all over the place. So there's my two straight ends on the ground. Right? All right. So now what I'm going to do is, okay, 
This is just something you need to no, this is, a little, this is done a little bit differently than some other people. Some other people do their walls standing up and they let it settle down. Not doing that. My walls are going to be laying down and it's going to lay down inside. And so one side is going to be completely flat. So in the mold process or in the filling process, I need to make sure that I lay everything down. Okay, so. Now I'm putting it on cardstock to basically hold it steady or hold it still uh, for the for the molding okay so it doesn't matter which but I'm gonna go ahead and put one of these down and I'm using E6000 to hold the cork to the cardstock it doesn't matter where you put it or how much you put uh, all you're doing is basically just putting it down so that it's held in place. That's all that matters, okay? I didn't even measure. I just placed it down, right? Okay. Put it down. And now this, either this or this is going to be the top of my wall. I'm planning on making this the, I mean, sorry, the bottom of my wall. So I want to make sure that it is as flat as can be. The top, not so much. It doesn't matter. The top can be as jagged as you want, or it doesn't matter. But the bottom needs to be flat, because that's what you're going to actually base once the wall is dry. Okay, now how tall do I want to make my wall? Well, if I had a figure next to a wall, how big would I want that wall? Probably, probably about this tall. Right? Okay, so how big is that? Should be like three quarters of an inch. It is three quarters of an inch. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little ruler here, put a little ruler there, lining the numbers up so that when I get ready to put this piece on, when I put this piece on my cardboard, I can know exactly where okay three quarters of an inch is and where three quarters of an inch is I could probably do a little bit more it's okay it's going to be a jagged topped uh, wall anyway okay all right so now I've got the bottom that's going to be based the top of the wall, remember this is on its side. This is laid on its side. Okay, get rid of some of that extra cork dust. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this in half. I'm going to put one on this end and one on this end, mainly just to keep the wall in check, <laughs> to keep it from extending longer than that five and seven eighths inch length. Now what's cool about this form, okay, this this is a mold form, what's kind of cool about it is it's going to be reusable. I can reuse it as many times as I want. Okay, so we're going to apply some pressure on this. We're going to let this dry for about 30 minutes, and then we'll be right back. Okay, I'm cherry picking still. I'm trying to put quite a few of these little bitty rocks in. I want there to be a lot of little ones. Um, I probably should have cherry picked from the beginning, but that's okay. Yeah, when you buy a bag of aquarium gravel like this, you get all sizes. Little bitty ones, you get big ones, you even get giant ones. Okay, that should be good. I'm just going to scoot that off to the side. Now I'm going to make sure this glue and these rocks get... I don't want a whole lot of this. I want every rock to have completely coated in glue. 
and I don't want this glue to drip down through all my rocks. I want them to hug the rocks. And it looks like there's actually a good coating. There might be, it might still be just a little bit too watery. That's all right. I probably should start over, but you know, I'm not going to do that. Okay, we got to make this thoroughly mixed up. I want every rock to have glue on all the sides. So no matter where it falls into the mold, it will be able to stick to each other without too much dripping. There you go. That actually looks pretty good. Okay, that little mixture. I got big rocks and little rocks. Okay, so then what you do is you take your mold and get some wax paper. Okay, and, make, and a lot of times wax paper will be double-sided. They'll have wax on both sides. And usually one side is more waxy than the other. You just have to feel of it. And this side has obviously got more wax to it. So I'm going to put that face up on my mold, right? And I'm going to just push down a little bit in there to kind of give it like a little bed of uh, wax paper, like a, uh, like a little bathing, like a little swimming pool of wax paper. I can maybe go... Maybe a little bit more to that end because I don't want any cork getting stuck to my mold or my, my stones, I mean. Okay. Okay. You just pour it in there. And then just pound it down. It should be sticky, and it is, which is very good. Perfect. I'm not putting it all in there. Okay, as you can see, I still have quite a bit left. But what I want to do, a lot of times you'll have more stones there than you do uh, that's needed, right? That's good. That's good. That's they don't cost anything. They're super cheap. So Now what I'm trying to do is pound this down so that it's level or close to. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect because it could be as wide as this, uh, but I'm only using it as thick as the cork. So if it goes above the cork a little bit, it's okay. But what I want it to be is fairly flat. The bottom is going to be flat because it's pushed up against the but the top won't be flat unless I make it flat, All right? So, so I'm flattening it out. Now you could take this wax paper, you could fold it over and press down on it like that to kind of flatten it out. And I might do that as a final step, but right now I'm just trying to get it to kind of shift and adjust and fall into the right place, you know? And it's okay that when I'm pushing, I'm kind of pushing it in a certain direction trying to get it to be trying to get it to be perfect okay that's pretty flat right I think it is but there's a little bit of spots there that could that could benefit from some of these little cherry picked rocks that I had so I might just not that big one that just fell but like a cherry pick one just put it in there just to oh it already went in there it's nice just to fill these little bitty holes with the little rocks all right, so I've got the rocks. I don't know if you can kind of see this. I'm going to try to angle it so that you can see what it looks like inside the mold, the rocks in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this over. I might even just do the, might do it both ways. And then I'm see how flat that is. That's nice and flat. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven. I'm going to put it in the oven for 30 minutes at 100 degrees. Nothing super hot, just 30 minutes, 100 degrees, and see what it looks like when it comes out. All right, I'll see you in 30 minutes. All right, I've gone ahead and taking the uh, stones out of the mold. And what I'm going to be using is this E6000 glue. That's my go-to terrain modeling glue. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bead of it on the popsicle stick here. And then I'm going to take the stone pieces and I'm going to stand them up onto the popsicle stick 
and then uh, but I do want to point this out I've, I went ahead and I've deleted a couple of videos up to this point because all it was was me taking the stones out of the mold which only takes like two seconds but the because it's in the wax paper and that wax paper just slides right out but then the wax paper tends to get stuck to the stones so you have to kind of peel them off and uh, you don't want to damage the wall by yanking it. So you had to peel them off like one at a time while holding the stones in place. Uh, because even though it's dry, it's not 100% dry. Alright, so it's going to let that sit there for a second. And then once it's dry, we're going to go ahead and paint it black. And then I will put some flock on it. And then we'll come back and take a look at it. Alright, I'm going to dry brush it with actually some stone gray. Alright, thanks for... Uh, well, actually, it'll take about, I don't know, I'm going to prop it up here. I'm using my ruler here to prop it up to keep it from tilting and falling over. And there we go. And I'll see you when you get back. All right, here's my three walls that I've got. i got the two cork walls and the stone walls, and these are dry. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take them outside and we're going to spray them black. All right, so once they get sprayed back, black, and I dry brush them and I flock them, then I'll bring them right back in and we'll take a look at them. All right, guys, here we go. We are back. And here are those walls that I just finished making. Uh, I just finished dry brushing them. I, well, I painted them black, obviously, and I dry brushed them with Vallejo Stone Gray. And then I flocked the bases. And this is what they look like. Okay, so uh, that's pretty pretty sturdy. This one's actually got a lot of weight to it. These are very lightweight, almost no weight to them. Uh, they're about the same size as you can see. I, I went ahead and made these, what, three quarters of an inch tall. And then this is, so you can kind of see the difference in the appearance in the cork walls versus the actual stone walls uh, which ones do you like do you like do you like the cork walls you know are the, are the cork walls pretty cool um or do you like the stone walls you know i, th I think that i think the stone walls look pretty good okay so what i want to do is um i'm going to put some figures behind i'm going to change the camera angle but i have some american war of independence in 28s i also have some 20 millimeter world war ii and then I've got some Warhammer and a Reaper figure. And so I just want to kind of show you how these walls compare at different scales and by different companies. All right, so like these are the American War of Independence behind the stone wall, right? I think that looks pretty good. Or the cork wall, that looks really good too. I mean, You know, that looks like, that's, that's pretty good. Now we've got fantasy figures. Yeah, these fantasy figures, they look pretty good. Behind either wall. You know? Alright, now let's take a look. Even the World War II figures look good. Alright, well this was uh, building the stone wall. Pretty cheap and easy. And I still have my mold where I can make multiple more uh, brick walls if I want to. Alright, thanks for coming on and checking out this video. And remember, if you like these videos, like them. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, please do. And if you want to help support these model making projects, hit the PayPal me link in the description below. Every donation to the channel really does help me out a lot. I do appreciate that. You guys have a great night.